my favorite author, James Allen, says, man is eager to change his circumstances, but is unwilling to change himself. Is that you? Are you having a difficult time changing your external environment because you do not recognize that the real problem is not outside of yourself, it's inside of you? It is you. You know, in my life, I have had to grapple with that notion that everything that was happening to me wasn't always about somebody else doing it to me or something else that was responsible for it happening to me. There are those moments, of course. There are moments when somebody else is affecting you, when somebody else has power to affect you, or when other things take you off your center. But for the majority of people that I have encountered, the issue is not what is outside of you as much as what is inside of you that is a game changer. How do you tackle the one problem that you are? It's like addiction, right? I'm reading this, these articles on addiction and they say, you know, it's mostly, you know, addictive behavior is the, is the consistency of the behavior or the frequency of the behavior that indicates addiction. Are you addicted to self-sabotage? Are you addicted to self-sabotage because you, one, you're aware of what you're doing or two, because inadvertently you're not aware that you're self-sabotaging? Both of those questions are relevant. If you ask yourself and, and, you, and you find the answer for either one of those, the truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter whether you're self-sabotaging or not in this moment, or in past times. The important thing is what you choose to do with the information once you have access to that information. Knowledge is power. And like I said, knowledge in the hands of a fool is nothing more than mischief, but I'm hoping that you're not that, that you're someone that wants to take control of your life, your destiny, and change your outcomes. In order to change your outcomes, you have to spend a lot of time and effort changing yourself. That's the change that needs to take place. And the change agents are not always as illusory as you think they are. A lot of times what you need to change is right in front of you if you pay attention. This morning while I was, you know, doing something, doing some activity, I had this thought and the thought was one of the things that has hindered me in my life personally because of the kind of personality I am is self-disappointment. So often you know, when I encounter situations, whether it, in, it involves other people or, 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 or it involves circumstances that make me reflect on myself, if I'm disappointed in myself, that can really take a toll on, on me. You know, it can really stop me from engaging with people a certain way or acting a certain way towards others because disappointment in myself is greater than other people being disappointed in me. And you know what I'm talking about. Those of you who beat up on yourself, who are always trying to be better than, than, than what other people have, the expectation other people put on you, and you have this expectation for yourself to be greater, to be better, and to do better. And sometimes it seems no matter what you do, you're always disappointing someone or somebody. Well, here's a news flash. You're always going to disappoint somebody. <laughs> it's Aesop's fable, right? You can please some of the people some of the time, but you cannot please all the people all the time. It took me almost a, a hundred years to realize that, but it's the truth. If you try to please everyone, you're never, you're always going to come ashore. You're never going to win. But the whole aspect of self-disappointment is one that we want to address today. When I experience self-disappointment, there's a lot of negative emotions that start filtering into my mind. You know, I'm with James, you know, thoughts equals actions, actions equal habits, habits equals circumstance. So in order to alter your circumstance, you have to alter your thinking. And, and listen to me, nothing I'm saying is new. I'm just trying to say in a way that makes sense to you. And maybe you get it, right? So the first thing you need to do when you experience self-disappointment is to alter your thought pattern to alter your thinking, because if you don't, here's the road that you're going down, right? When I experience self-disappointment, I start self-pity. I always say this, and it's the truth. And if there's anybody out there that wants to challenge me on this, nobody knows how to throw a pity party like I do. I haven't thrown one in a long time, but when I do, I have the blowers and the hats. I don't invite anyone because it's my party. 
but it's not really a good party because a lot of times the party is just insulating me in self-pity and is making me feel worse about who I am. So self-pity is not a great thing, but it comes with that whole aspect of feeling disappointed in yourself. The other thing is remorse. You start feeling remorse for the things you've done in the past, the things you've done recently, even the things that maybe you haven't done yet, because some people are that are, are that meticulous in their thought process, you know, when they're when their self-destruction mode is kicked in, they're already thinking ahead about how they're already messed up and they and it hasn't even occurred. Are you one of those people that you have the ability to alter your future in the present without having even experienced the future? It's a is a good it's a good thing to have, but you're not using the gift correctly. The other thing is when you have disappointed yourself or experiencing self-disappointment is that you participate in the blame game and the shame game. You start shaming yourself. You start blaming yourself for all the things that you have done or the things that you are not. You know, you you so many of us that 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 turn all the pain from the external into the internal, what we do is start internalizing. And we start blaming ourselves and we start feeling guilty and we start holding on to the shame of the experience instead of realizing that you should let that thing flow right through you and out of you. Don't hold on to those emotions because those emotions can only serve to destroy the one person who has the power to change your environment and your destiny, you. So we talked about the self-pity. We talked about the remorse. We talked about the blame and the guilt and the shame. But the self-sabotage is something that can destroy you in the moment. When we're in that mode, when we are engaged in self-sabotage in our efforts, known or unknown to ourselves, we start affecting those around us. And then it filters out, right? It's like people see you on this self-destructive path and they don't know how to stop you. And a lot of times, if you're really good at this game, if you're good at the game of hiding your self-disappointment and internalizing and all the other things I said, a lot of times people outside of you may not notice what, you, what you're doing. And it becomes so much a part of who you are and so much a part of your personality that you start skulking away, you start pulling away, you start self-isolation. And self-isolation is never a good thing. The more you self-isolate, the less likely you are to grow. And when you're not growing, you're literally dying spiritually, not physically, but spiritually. Some people do die physically because the inertia stops them from doing things that will, you know, involve movement and they find themselves just, you know, going downhill and they don't know how to stop the process of going downhill. I wanted to talk about this topic because when you're disappointed in yourself, it doesn't matter what other people say to you sometimes. They cannot pull you out of this whole notion that you're guilty. You're guilty because you know that you could have done better, should have done better, and you didn't. And the only thing that can change all of these negative emotions that surround self-disappointment is a realization that it's okay. It's okay to be disappointed in yourself. It's okay to beat yourself up for a little bit. You know, I tell people all the time, I have a process. I can beat myself up real bad day one. Day two, I'm coming out of that. By day three, there's no more beating up because by day three, I have realized that the whole effort and the whole value of beating myself up is not to stay in that place. Everything, all, all those emotions should be transient. They should be passing you through, passing through you. It's like water. Water doesn't stay stagnant. Like I said in one of my videos, it just moves around or it goes through. Those emotions are not supposed to be something that you hold on to and that you build up because as you build them, you're destroying yourself. I hope you got some kind of gold nugget from what I'm saying today. The purpose of me addressing this topic is because a lot of times in relationships, people don't realize that the disappointment, you telling someone that you're, you're disappointed in them are you telling someone that you don't believe in them, that they internalize that self-disappointment and it cripples them. It, it, it creates this inertia, this inability to move forward, this inability to move past the criticism, the inability to accept that it's okay if this person's disappointed in you, it doesn't mean it has to be the end of the world. If you study children, children show you how it's done. And as adults, we just need to remember 
that all emotions, whether negative or positive, are not permanent. Only, and you cannot try to make negative emotions permanent because when you do, you're on a path of self destruction. My name is Ingrid Felton. As always, thank you for showing up here on my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for subscribing to the videos. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for telling other people about what I'm doing here. And thank you for always visiting the channel. Continue to support me. Your support is needed. And as always, I hope that you take the information that I've given to you and use it so that you can become a better version of yourself. Bye.